maybe I could say a little more about um, the theme of uh, confidence and how it can be found how it can be expressed, how it can be cultivated. Um, there's a, um, an important uh, distinction perhaps between uh, mindfulness training and, and uh, other kinds of, or at least other approaches to skills training in that um, there's a, uh, an invitation to consider the possibility that uh, we already have everything that we need for this uh, journey. So confidence isn't something that we have to create. It's, um, it's actually already ours by the nature of our being human. We have access to it. Um, now, of course, this depends a little bit on what, um, what we mean by confidence and also what we're having confidence in. Uh, so um, it's actually a, a, a confidence to be who we are. Um, and so you might say, well, how could we not be? So therefore, how could we not have confidence in it? And yet um, we oftentimes don't have confidence in ourselves. It's almost like we, we don't acknowledge who we are and we don't accept who we are and we don't connect with who we are and therefore a, a distrust uh, arises. And this particularly occurs in times of stress and difficulty, which um, perhaps create obstacles uh, to, our, uh, to our confidence, obstacles to accessing it, that is. Um, we tend to see everything in a, uh, a kind of a, I'm not sure what the opposite of rose tinted is. If there is such a phrase, we get rose tinted spectacles. Is there a kind of like a sort of, I don't know, gray tinted spectacles or something? But anyway, you know what I mean? The kind of opposite of that, where we actually see things um, with a, a kind of a more stressful hue. Um, everything gets seen through the lens of our difficulties. And, and that understandably creates um, anxiety and lack of trust because if, if what we see you know if our view is uh, tainted or tinted in this way then um, you know that affects everything provided that we are identified with that viewing so that's the key as soon as we can recognize that that's just a view that's just a, a circumstance um, Mark Williams and, and his team um, developing the mindfulness-based cognitive therapy course of depression originally um, talked about how um, the, um, the, 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 the negative thinking that happens in depression um, is a bit like the fever that occurs during uh, a, an episode of flu. And it's like it's a, it's a it's actually a byproduct of um, of a condition, rather than kind of the uh, you know something more fundamental. And yet the mistake that we make is that we can, we identify often with our stress and our so-called negative thinking, and um, rather than seeing it as a as a symptom of of, of a condition that we're in. It actually comes from our view rather than how things actually actually are. Um, so actually, even just recognizing that is a is a is an invitation to confidence to see that um, the states that um, cause us difficulties are uh, inevitably transitory. Nevertheless, our our lack of confidence, or our, our perhaps our, our non-connecting with confidence can be very pervasive over, over time. So um, it's useful to understand how stress functions. It's useful to understand how we can get stuck in this way. And the understanding itself is already a separating from the, the identification with it. Um, also, we can perhaps be 
kind to ourselves in recognizing that um, these patterns are not our fault. They are just part of our um, part of our uh, inheritance. Um, yeah, it's actually from a, a, a from evolution's perspective, it's um, highly adaptive to see things in a very negative way when stress arises, because it's like a high alert for danger. We see danger where there isn't any. We see threat where there isn't any. But there might be. You know, so once we're alerted to that 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 sense of in a threat state, then we we uh, it's actually quite adaptive to see more threats than there are. Because if we miss a threat, historically speaking, you know that could be a predator in the bushes out to get us. Whereas if we miss um, a friendly smile or a beautiful rose, and we we don't get the pleasure of that, um, that is um, not fatal. So we miss a bit of pleasure, but we survive. And of course, you know, evolution wires us for survival. So it's adaptive from that perspective, but it has this byproduct of um, perhaps dragging us down into a false perception of, of how things are. So recognizing how stress functions is, is helpful. We can actually start to maybe befriend the process and realize, you know, what it's doing for us and um, how there are certain symptoms that arise that we don't have to buy into, including I'm not good enough, for example, which is a kind of a, a sort of classic uh, expression of, of lack of confidence and realizing that we do actually have the tools that we need. We do have the capacity for awareness. We do have a working body right now, working by which I mean it's alive, may not be working exactly as we want it to. Maybe not even nearly so, but nevertheless, it's working from the perspective of, of um, uh, we are living. So maybe we can have confidence in, in that. So a sense of, of kind of trusting our, um, on our experience aligning ourselves with our experience and working from that doesn't mean we necessarily like everything that's here or even feel that we're confident in everything that's here but confident in the willingness to say yeah that's that's what's happening here at the moment confidence in our moment by moment experience so how do we cultivate this? Well, um, we can practice uh, confidence by reminding us of this um, over and over again, that actually who we are is uh, deeper than just our thoughts, deeper than just our moment-to-moment uh, -moment reactions to situations. Uh, we can uh, practice coming back to awareness, which is the capacity to see all of this going on. And the more that we do that, the more that we can really get to know reality, how things are, and see it from a perspective of awareness rather than one of caught up identification. And perhaps we have some experience of this being useful and maybe we, you know, we have a look at some of the science of mindfulness and go, oh yeah, I'm not the only person who's found this. There's been some decent studies that have collated lots of people's experiences showing this kind of thing. Then we can actually, the confidence can start to get, um, I don't want to use the word built because what I'm suggesting is it's already there, but it can be uh, uncovered um, to a kind of a greater degree. And perhaps it becomes a sort of a virtuous feedback loop where our confidence breeds more confidence. And maybe we, we find that we can act a little bit more skillfully in day-to-day -day life. Uh, once we've um, developed our ability to 
Well, it's a bit like, in a way, it's, you know, the metaphor that, or the analogy that's coming to my mind is like learning to drive, you know, you sort of get into a car for the first time, you go, what the, how do I do this? You, know, you might see other people do it. Um, but there's so much to kind of seemingly be aware of. And yet, after a while, we become confident. Maybe not that quickly, but... You know, if we see this, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a sort of a, not a particularly sophisticated analogy, but if we see ourselves as the, you know, the kind of the, um, the car and the driver um, and uh, our, our systems, our physical systems, our emotional systems, our mental systems are the, the vehicle that, um, that we are uh, driving through our lives, then practicing driving that skillfully actually understanding how it works, paying attention to, you know, the patterns and the, listening to the feedback from, from, you know, our machine, um, will breed confidence. And of course, as we, um, as we discover that we can actually begin to handle the difficulties in our lives, then that also breeds confidence. You know, the more that we cope with, the more that we realize we can cope. Um, and I've seen this, I mean, I've seen this happen in my own life, you know, as a kind of, um, you know, kind of, uh, before I began practicing at all, and before I had it, sort of any of this kind of understanding of my own patterns, I felt very much at the mercy of them. And therefore, I was scared by them. Um, and so that was anxiety making. It was almost like, I don't know what's around the next corner. What happens when the next stress arises? I won't be able to cope with that. What about the next inevitable, you know, block in the road? Whereas I have more confidence now. I mean, I still don't know what's coming up, but, you know, I've had some experience of navigating those blocks and some, you know, some bigger than others. So there's a sense of confidence building that, okay, things may not always be plain sailing, but I can, I can manage, I have managed. You know, it's actually proof, proof of that. So there's a kind of sort of recognition of this up, upskilling. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, for those people who are new to meditation practice, hang in there. John Kabat-Zinn likes to say, you know, give it, a, give it a year or two, at least, before you make any kind of assessments. And for those people who are experienced, uh, you know, you've been doing this for a little while, well, I'm imagining that you may resonate with what I'm saying, because if you, if you didn't, you probably wouldn't be here. So, um, so those of you who are new can also see the nodding of those people who, you know, have got some experience of it. So hang in there and you know, it's worth giving our full, as far as we can, our full energy to this training. And it may not be quick uh, and it may be gradual, but uh, in my experience, it's worth it. And um, it's, a, it's a wonderful experience when actually we realize, hey, I'm, I can manage, I can manage. And sometimes I can manage quite well, sometimes less well, but basically, you know, I have managed. I'm still here. And so are all of you. So you can all do it, even if you don't feel like you've got a lot of confidence at the moment. Actually, just your very being here is, a, is proof of that. So it's just cultivating that some more. All right, so we can do this through our meditation practice. So let's, um, let's practice some confidence. So uh, coming back into, um, into sitting, or if you want to be in a different posture from sitting, feel free to lie down, stand. Or whatever, whatever's needed for you. <laughs> 